They do even no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they take money in buck. Woman picking, they the street, they hawk. Still, them talk, say, make we no talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yeah, yeah, my egun don't come. Hello there. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you from wherever you are watching from. And this is Mayegun live. Please share this broadcast. Just discovered I shouldn't be smiling. Nigeria Air Force and Nigeria Army, they have just uh, killed over 150 people last night they said it was a mistake Two villages in Kaduna were blew up into mysteries. At uh, that was last night, where they were celebrating uh, Idil Mon, uh, Malud. Sorry, Malud Nabil rather. Malud Nabil is uh, the birthday of Prophet Muhammad. One hundred and fifty-eight. The media is reporting 126. Some are reporting 30. Others are reporting 80. The eyewitness said they have counted over 150 people, including children, killed by mistake. Glory to you too. And yes, we like you. Thank you very much. Share this broadcast. Invite your friends, invite your not so friendly friends, and tell them. My good today. And yes, like Thank you, Motideo. So, uh, good morning to you once again. Uh, good afternoon to you and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. Uh, this is Mayegu and live. As you are joining the broadcast, remember to pay your own offering. The offering is you like the video, share the broadcast invite everyone that you think should probably see this too okay and then read the description of the broadcast as well where you will easily kind of understand what we are talking about and possibly make a contribution too and thank you if you have done all of that already indeed last night 
in Nigeria. Hmm? Some group of Nigerians, they were celebrating the birthday of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their own uh, communities. The Nigerian uh, Air Force, Nigerian Army, they said they received an intel that terrorists were gathering in that community. And the intel prompted them to act by sending drones with bomb. Now you heard it. Nigeria has drones that carries bombs, which means the terrorist, the real terrorist that Sheikh Osama bin Gumi was visiting at their different locations, guided by the officers of the Nigerian Army, DSS, police, providing security while he meet with uh, all these uh, terrorists. Nigeria has lost thousands of uh, their own soldiers to this, uh, to the code, uh, what do you call the violent uh, death of this terrorist. Thousands, no joke, all right? However, Nigeria has a drone, I mean, a drone carrying, so where they have drones carrying bombs. So they decided to send a coordinate. And when they send the coordinates, they bombed the place three times. It wasn't just one bomb. It was a coordinated bombing, right? Where civilians and their bodies were like, I can't show you the video. I'm sorry, I've not got so much uh, uh, tool to sort of uh, manage the graphic, okay? The gory images, enough to be able to show that to you on this uh, platform. I can't. I bet some of you have seen the, the uh, images. Or for those of us who know the history of Nigeria corrupt system, especially that their Nigerian uh, army or defense, the cesspool of corruption, the corruption is so deep that Nigeria is spending one third of our national budget on defense. The more Nigeria spend on defense, the bigger and stronger the terrorist became. And you might not be hearing too much of it these days. It is because Nigerians under APC, they have grown cold of some of these horrible, horrible happenings. Today, if you hear the news that the terrorist killed or beheaded 100 people, kidnapped 400, people just read them like they are reading Manchester, tra Manchester United, trashed voting. They are indifferent. As long as it is not happening to them, that means God loves them and is protecting them than those who are being killed every day. Killing people in Nigeria every day is no longer a big news to majority of them in Nigeria anymore. People have cried, people have begged, they've protested, they've rioted, they've done everything to get the attention of these criminals. But you know something, while the terrorists are spreading and growing stronger, especially in Northern Nigeria, the system, the Nigeria military, who has all the equipment to track correctly, to track people correctly, and at the end of the day, get at the terrorist. With all the equipments they have, no, 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 no. They are using most of that to track and kill Nigerians. All they need is just the same fate that befell the people of Tudun uh, Biri. Tudun Biri is uh, under a local government right there in uh, Kaduna. And they were just like every other regular people. Okay? And boom! Oh, it was a mistake. Oh, we made a mistake, uh, you know, to just kill in, on Nigerian soil using the Nigerian government's weapons. 
to massacre Nigerians and there is no consequences. No, none. Two years ago, 2021, the same Nigeria military eh, said they received an intel that terrorists were grouping somewhere in that same Kaduna. And they received a coordinate. They now sent their own soldiers to go straight to that uh, location. While the soldiers were going, eh, before you know it, the terrorists ambushed them. How did they know they were coming? Eh? They ambushed them. In that space, while they were fighting for their lives, they quickly put out a distress call to the Nigerian uh, military headquarters. And guess what happened? They sent the Nigerian Air Force, gun, sort of a gun uh, ship, like a gun uh, aircraft. Guess what happened? When the aircraft got to the location, it did not neutralize the terrorist. It started shooting their own soldiers from behind. It is like uh, you are there facing the fire of uh, the terrorist who ambushed you, even before you get to the location you were given, right? And then you, you started hearing, like, okay, that's a military helicopter coming. And then the next thing, they started shooting at you. You, your own convoy. And some guys uh, actually made the video. They ran away. Soldiers ran away from the fighting spot and made video. We've had different, 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 uh, you know, our verified... Uh, statements of even soldiers themselves who can testify to how much life is being lost every day in Nigeria to either the mismanagement of uh, intel, okay, or by wrong intel. And in Nigeria, just like uh, even Nigerians themselves, taking responsibility is like drinking poison for them. Because they would rather blame somebody else for it. The same Nigerian Air Force, Nigeria military, Abi Nigerian Army, they said they received an intel. This was uh, about uh, four years ago and ran in Borono State. The intel was that Boko Haram, they were grouping together somewhere to launch attack. When the intel got to them, according to the, when the intel got to them, they quickly put together the coordinates. Mm? And they decided to just go and bomb all those terrorists there. So what happened? The coordinates that they, 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 they managed to get as their intel, and they sent their own uh, bombers to go and bomb everything that is moving there, happened to be the IDP camp that the same Nigerian government specifically set up Eh? for the victims of uh, Boko Haram, those who were running away from Boko Haram uh, terrorism, the place that government gave them, the place they gave uh, all the charity organizations to go to and give, you know, help uh, all the IDP, they call them IDP, internally displaced people. Listen to me, these are refugees, Nigerians who are refugees in their own country. In 2015, we were told more than 1 million Nigerians were displaced by Boko Haram uh, terrorism. By the end of uh, Boko Haram's time, plus uh, Boko Haram, ISWAP, uh, Fulani terrorists, more than 10 million Nigerians have been displaced, not just in Northern Nigeria, all over Nigeria in eight years. Do you get that? So the same people who set up a location for the refugees, victims of Boko Haram, they received an intel. The intel said Boko Haram were gathering in that place. And boom, they sent the bombers. And they bombed them, not once, not twice, not thrice. Four horrible times they made the mistake. What, what happened in Kaduna last night? They are never going to investigate it, but we are going to get to know what happened eventually or why they did it. We have heard the, uh, the uh, conspiracy of sending soldiers, Nigerian soldiers, 
who are of a southern uh, extraction, okay, into their death using the same cook up intel, okay? Intel is like intelligence that you expect security agents to be gathering, especially DSS. Their job is to stop a crime before it happens, not to threaten people, okay? And lock people up simply because they suspect them. No, you would stop a crime before they happen, which means you have them at a very old shock. Your evidence is solid. Your intelligence is solid. Because before you make, before you deploy the resources of government to go and uh, curb any sort of a threat, your intelligence must be very, very solid. That is not that of Nigeria. When they do all this and people die, they just send the media to say, oh, yeah, it was a mistake. And the saddest part of it is this. Oh, those who are dead, they will remain just numbers. The media are already giving out different figures. 30 people died, 50 injured. No, 80 people died, 100 injured. Oh, no, 126 died, eh? uncountable injured. Oh, no, in fact, it's even more than that. They are still doing the search and rescue for those Eh? that probably when the bomb landed, it wasn't even at the party. It may just be inside their own houses. They actually bombed the two villages see, on a wrong intel. And you haven't seen anybody tendering their own resignation letter right now. Somebody gave that order. Somebody gave that intel. Somebody told them it was solid. 156 Nigerians are dead. We will never probably know their names. And all you are going to hear is that uh, it was a mistake. People they killed four years ago at uh, in Iran, those they killed eh, two years ago, so we're using the same method. You probably will never remember their names. I don't remember their names. Because I would probably have remembered their names if there is any justice to show that who gave that order. On the issue of the one they bombed in Iran in Borono State. We later figured that it was because Babashir Lawal, the grass cutter, was trying to cover up his uh, own uh, corruption. When uh, Bokuari came in, he set up something called the Northeast Development Commission, NEDC. This uh, commission is like NDDC, Niger Delta Development Commission which is to say, okay, when the Niger Delta militants were kidnapping, expatriating, bombing pipeline, bombing uh, oil installments and all that, when they made an arrangement for them, they set up NDDC. In order, that is to help develop Niger Delta. It was just a job for the boys. That's the story for another day. So when Bokwari came in, he set up, I mean, Northern, I mean, sorry, Northeast Development Commission. NEDC, and he now puts that office, I mean, he now put that uh, agency or whatever, he now put them under the secretary to the government of the Federation's office, SGF's office, Babashir Lawal. And immediately they voted over 200 billion naira to that uh, commission. They appointed the commission members. What was their own? Uh, appointed assignments. They were to rebuild, okay? Renovate, rebuild, and relocate the victims of uh, Boko Haram. 250 billion era take of grant, take of uh, money. They were to build houses for them. They were to return them back to their communities, rebuild their communities, build their schools, build their medical centers, build their roads, provide, med you know, things that actually have been, you know, 250 billion naira. Babashir Lawal, eh, built zero housing, zero anything. But he did do something like feeding the IDP with 20,000 naira every day, spending, according to him, they were spending over, uh, 
50, 50 million naira every day to feed the people in IDP camp, which happened to be a lie. In the, I mean, also, the same Babashir Lawal awarded the, what he called, the, 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 the cutting of, uh, the weeding, cutting of grass around the camp, the IDP camp, the refugee camps. And you will think when we say camp, 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 probably this is a facility uh, that, like, that is like an hostel where people just stay, a lot of people. No, 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 no. Refugee, refugee camp. These are abandoned schools, abandoned government properties here and there where people are sheltered. People run there. They are there in large numbers. So government went there to start supporting them or giving them something and other people. There is no camp that looks like an hostel. These are where millions of people that escaped the, uh, the Fulani GRDC, the Boko Haram GRDC, that the same Bokwari government continued to pardon. Again, Babashir Lawa was under investigation by the National Assembly. In order to cover it up, they decided to go and bomb the, I mean, to go and bomb the, the same victims of uh, terrorism. That is on record. Babashir Lawa today eh, is a free man. He's working free everywhere. Uh, he awarded 242 million naira to his own son, a company that is his own company, but managed by his son, to go and help cut the grass around those IDP camps. And the people living in those places were begging on the streets. Children were practically being uh, traded for sex, sex for food, under these uh, change criminals at the time. So why would you have to kill 156 people and right now, the only thing you have heard from them is that it was a mistake. They are already typing that on social media. Baba, that is the true picture of what Nigeria is. A lot of us are just statistic -y. If you are indeed eh, someone who has witnessed a uh, life and then uh, the sanctity of uh, a life, or sorry, the sacredness of life, eh, you will shudder when you see what life is worth in Nigeria. All they need is just to give you a, you know, just tag you something. When their policeman kills you, eh? The system will eventually even blame you in death. Nigeria is a place where you just hear about a number of people killed extrajudicially. And those who carried out that heinous act, they are completely excused. How could you kill 156 people? And now we don't even know the name of person who, who, who gave them that intel and the person who gave the order. What does that tell you? You remember what I do say, like, you see those of us who survived yesterday. For example, you see those who are like a survivors of yesterday. They are the victims of today. And those who survive today, we are victims of tomorrow. Every day that Nigeria continues to exist in this trajectory, Baba, we are just a disaster waiting to happen. We are a victim, just like a cow, waiting to be slaughtered. Everyone is moving on, like, oh, how can they do that? The media will be abuzz with a few noise, few days, because tomorrow, another thing is going to happen tomorrow. Eh? Those who, are, who survived Nigeria today, tomorrow may be their own day. Nigeria is a place where people die unnaturally. And it appears that majority are so helpless 
it's more or less like they are just sitting dock and waiting for their own time. Baba, people are dying of hunger. Hunger, A B. Imagine dying of hunger. Dying because you have no food. Imagine the last moment. They said before you die of no food at all, it would take like four days, five days. No food, no water. I think it's about, is it five days or eight days? About people, they, they lie down, they wait for, because they cannot feed. People are choosing bits. You know, have you seen where people are skipping their medication? Eh? Because of money. Your, your, uh, your doctor says, this is your health issue. This is your prescription, your medication. You use one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. Or you use them every for four hours. But now, that the cost of uh, healthcare, cost of uh, medication of drug in Nigeria has jumped from 0% to over 400%. People are now trying to choose between maybe they should just use it in the morning. Some are choosing that I will just use it in the evening because I can no longer afford to get my supply. So they are there slowly and slowly they are dying. That is what Nigeria does. But you see those who die violently and those who are waiting to die, it is like a word of, uh, it's like a deja vu. What do you want us to do? There's nothing we can do. Are you serious? Eh? No, you can't. Everyone, whether you are rich or poor or this or that, eh? In what Nigeria is today, every one of you is a victim in the waiting. I was reading somewhere. We are the same Nigeria military who has uh, intelligence on how to kill innocent people without taking responsibility. You know, they, well, I read it in the news. They said they took responsibility. We have taken responsibility. It was a, it was a mistake. It was an accidental bombing. Hello, you just committed murder. America that is fighting war all over the place. Eh, Ahmed. I hope you are watching because you are likely going to need to call in tonight to help us uh, on this, okay? America, the world power, hmm? that is fighting war here and there. They do prosecute their own soldiers that kills, uh, what do you call that kills unarmed civilians. So if you are giving an in, if you are giving intel for the American uh, intelligence, uh, what do you call it, to act on, intelligence to act on, you will be responsible for what happened. And I mean, if you only do it once, you will never do it twice. At least you get to know, they are going to set up an inquiry, an investigation. The families of those who are the victims are going to be given at least some closure. Now imagine if America had to bomb America, I mean, bomb Americans inside the America. Oh, we just received an intel. Alaska, that shared border with Russia, we discovered that some people are grouping together at the border of Alaska. And we suspect that they, are, they must be Russian uh, terrorists or Russian this or that. And then the intelligence is so solid, we are just going to go there and bomb them in America, on American soil. The same people who have no intel to discover the people who are kidnapping people in Abuja. The federal capital territory. I, will, I mean, I read a story, a very sad story of a man. Okay. He was kidnapped. He was kidnapped. I mean, so he himself and his wife, they were both kidnapped when they were like, you know, uh, coming back from an outing in Abuja. When they kidnapped them, they took them into a forest that is not far from that same Abuja. They said in that forest, <laughs> you see all this news of uh, terrorists, bandits, and all of that, who are so comfortable kidnapping 
and killing people, kidnapping hundreds and thousands of people, holding them hostage in their captivity for months. Sometimes they kill them. This couple, they said, when they arrive at the camp, it's, like it's, it's a camp. It's not even like a makeshift camp. Like, okay, oh, it's a temporary camp. No, they were there. They have art, they built. They have women, they have, uh, they have uh, children. Some are even farming. At the back of uh, their space there, they were farming there. They were living normal life. You could walk around and go and buy something in a small shop inside the forest there, not far from Abuja. And then people that they captured, kidnapped from around Abuja. All of them tied down, chained down, being beaten every day, being raped every day, being sodomized every day. The man and his wife, they were raped. They raped the man, sodomized him. They raped his wife repeatedly until they were able to pay the ransom of a 20 million era. Now, they released them after paying the ransom. The man went back to the, they, they took his wife for medical check, like a general check, you know, knowing what he saw. They said, the man said, he saw where people are calling their families on their own phones. There are phones there. Which means the intelligence, uh, the Nigerian intelligence agency, NIA, DSS, if they really care in protecting you and not protecting the criminals, the drug dealers, the money launderers, the organ traffickers, who are today parading themselves as your governors, your senators, your president, and the rest of them, if they are not walking around to control and cage you from talking about these criminals, they could have discovered this with so much ease. So this, this man took his wife when he was finally released, took his wife uh, for the checkup. And ladies and gentlemen, eh, while they were waiting, when they, they said when they were returning from where they went for the checkup, on their way home again, they got kidnapped again. I mean, this is something you'll be like, oh, no, no, that, that, that story cannot be true. And that is why the criminals who are running Nigeria today can get away with anything. They understand the mind of the average Nigerian. A, man, I mean, a mind of a conquered people. Do you understand? They know that very well. Nigerians, they will see blue and they will see that because blue is not acceptable. They will begin to manufacture on, I mean, non existing red. And if there is no way to manufacture that uh, imaginary red, they will continue to call that blue red. However, this man got kidnapped again and his wife. This time around, eh? knowing what they were capable of and what happened to them the last time, eh? and knowing that no one is actually coming for them, okay? They negotiated, and they paid the ransom as fast as possible this time. This, is, this will be like a, one of uh, those rich people in Abu Dhabi. You will say, the rich also cry, right? Now, they said when they finally got released, and they got home, the result of uh, their test came out they both have hepatitis, uh, hepatitis B, C, the, the worst one, among other STDs. Eh? STDs that they eventually have to live with for the rest of their life. Majority, like something that is incurable. You just have to live with it. Something that is worse than HIV. There are people that, if they tell you their story and the trauma, the trauma they have to live with, these are rich people. These are people you will consider average and normal. A lot of you are hearing stories of people who are making over 50 million, 60 million annually in Nigeria. They are comfortable. But suddenly, 
they are selling their, their property, selling their asset and leaving Nigeria. You have no full story. You think they are leaving Nigeria to go and turn to security guard in America or to become this or that or live in the cold. They have seen what Nigeria is and what they believe is what they believe could actually still keep them alive and keep their sanity, seeing what happened to their friends and could happen to them or seeing what they have actually experienced and they never want to experience it again. Whatever is left of them, they are all living. That is the intelligence of Nigerian uh, security system. It is not to protect you. Seven people got kidnapped in Kaduna a few days ago. In that same Kaduna, the intelligence to go after the kidnappers is not there. They will easily tell uh, you that uh, the reason why they cannot rescue kidnap I mean, the kidnapped Nigerians is because they are just uh, afraid of them losing their lives. They have no capacity of rescuing or hand, I mean, rescuing Nigerians in captivity. They have no capacity of, uh, you know, uh, neutralizing all these terrorists, even though they have the equipment. They have the equipment to tap our cause. They have the equipment to tax, I mean, to tap your WhatsApp. You know, say WhatsApp is end-to-end uh, -end encryption. Abi, is that what you believe? That if you send message to yourselves on WhatsApp, eh? at least it's safe. Nobody can see it. Oh, you do have uh, that setting that deletes messages. Is that what you believe, Abi? The government all over the world, they have uh, the tools, they have the, uh, the, the capacity to de-encrypt any encrypted, uh, whatever you call it. Nigeria government, even though you probably read it and you just move on, Nigeria government invested over 40 billion Naira, God knows why, right? Because I don't think the technology, the technology is that expensive. Well, it is Nigerian's technology, what do you say, right? Over 40 billion Naira equipment uh, acquired by these rogues to tap your calls, to tap your emails, to tap your uh, messages, to tap everything you probably have there in your little way, hiding away. They can find whatever they are interested in finding. So if they have all these tools, if they have all the, including drones, who knows, maybe they also have the intelligence of uh, mapping that they are not telling you, the one that can easily tell where terrorists and terrorist activities are seriously taking place. Maybe they do have them, but someone somewhere in their own uh, usual Nigerian way is putting in the Nigerian ness in it, coloring it eh, with uh, either tribal, ethnic, religious, every other thing that you might want to color it as, and then labeling intelligence report either wrongly or intentionally. Now, I don't have uh, the full details of why they made the mistake of bombing 156 Nigerians uh, out of this world. And there is nobody right now standing there to take responsibility and say this, even like as human being, Oyibo will be like, oh my God, did I just kill 156 Americans? Oh my God, did I just kill uh, 156 uh, British or Britons? Like right there where you are. Instead of reading all of this and looking away, airs will be rolling right now. The president of the country will be speaking to everybody from wherever he is right now. He will be making moves to go to, to actually get all the families of the affected. Begin to, you know what I mean? But they won't do that. But in the next uh, few days, you begin to see politicians, okay, going into those areas. In fact, you will be seeing politicians visiting the governor of the state. And they will say, we come here to come and commiserate with you about the people that died in the unfortunate incident that happened at uh, Tudumbiri. Guess what? All of them, if you ask them, uh, sorry, sir, Mr. Minister, you are representing the president. Uh, you, uh, you, you are the what? Chief of uh, Army Staff. Oh, great. What about you? Oh, you are the Chief of General Staff. Great. What about you? You are the Chief of uh, Air Force. Wow, just a, break, uh, a big contingent. Oh. Wow, wow. What about you, sir? I am uh, the, the head of uh, the NSCDC. Oh, great. So you all came here because of people that uh, you mistakenly killed. 
Abby. Yes, we, we, we are here on behalf of Mr. President to come and uh, commiserate with people of Kaduna. In Kaduna, they won't go to that place. So, Then ask them, can you tell us, can you, make, I mean, can you give us uh, 10 names of those that died in that bombing? None of them will be able to mention one name or two names of people who died there because they don't give a damn about who died. Nobody's going to be responsible for it. Nobody's going to be punished for it. There is no inquiry that is going to say, oh, we have indicted this so, 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 and so. Police officer in America thinking he's doing his job, okay? He pinned a black man with his knees, pinned his neck down. People were there standing and he was there saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please, 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 let me, let, let me breathe. I'm choking. Oh, God, I'm going to die. Oh, I'm going to die. And the more he's screaming for help, this horrible police officer was feeling powerful, probably feeling on top of the world. If you die, you won't be the first person that will die. This is America. We can always put it on someone. We can always blame it on something. We can always, you know, this is it. We always protected the, we always I mean, the blue. We always protect the blue. America, this is it. That triggered something, something that has left an indelible, serious mark on the American polity and policies to this day. An American policeman killed an African American. Okay. So you see all of uh, the, uh, the talk around, uh, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, he, uh, he was, the, he was uh, he, he, uh, they have a word for this. So when you are not uh, allowing them to arrest you, you are, you are resisting arrest. He was resisting arrest. Hello. You have overdone it. You'll be they sentenced him to life in prison. Life imprisonment. Police officer, from police officer. Eh? To, to prisoner. And some will say, oh, that is too much. It no, 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 it's not too much. You can't say, okay, after, I mean, because you have uh, the state behind you that you could do, you know, you could do something on behalf of uh, the government. There are some things expected of you before an action that will actually take life on Nigerian soil is finally approved. So there must be that chain of approval. There must be people that are responsible for this. The names of those who died. There must be names of these people who died. So that those who are responsible for their death eh, are also named. They can know those they killed. But Nigeria won't do that. They won't. You will never know all of this. And it's the same thing. They can put a coordinate together and say, all of them we gather together, doing some, uh, uh, what do you call it? Care guide gyration. And they received an intel that uh, you are terrorist. And then they will bomb you. Oh, we are so sorry. How could you go and bomb people in Ibadan? Oh, it's, 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 it's so sorry, eh? It was a mistake. It was an accidental. You have killed about 200 people. How could that be? Who, who did that? We want to see the person that gave the order. And then the responsible people should be writing out the names of the victims. But as we are speaking right now, majority of the, of the victims have been buried. Abina, they say, go and bury them. You don't see the edge. Hey, 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 I have, I have found the head on our mama head be this. So I had another person get the leg. Somebody found the body uh, over there. Let's bring everything together. Yeah, pack everything. Yeah, yeah. So the crime scene has already been, you know what I mean? No investigation, no nothing. We are sorry, it was a mistake. Nigeria is a mistake. I'm sure you know. But you are not a mistake. I am not a mistake. Okay? And therefore, we didn't make this mistake. 
Now, here is the other complex part of it. There are those that this mistake, Nigeria, has managed to break and it has broken them beyond remedy. We have no idea of the number because Nigeria is a place where we don't have any real authentic data on anything. It's very sad. Because there was never a time that they actually had a plan to create a country that the people that are going to be living in it eh, agreed to be together. There was never a time. 